Hi Aries, welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. As the month progresses, things should feel a little bit easier for you. And that's because of two things. Firstly, quite early on in the month, we have Mars entering the sign of Taurus. So hopefully that should slow down a little bit of this action, motivation, energetic fighter spirit that Mars can bring with it. Halfway through the month, and this is the second reason why things should hopefully feel a little bit less chaotic in June, halfway through the month, we have both Venus and the Sun entering the sign of Cancer. So that should hopefully also bring a little bit more of an introspective, emotional energy uh, that allows us to draw within and focus a little bit less on what's going on outside of us. If you remember, towards the end of the May, Jupiter entered the sign of Gemini. And in case you didn't catch the live that I did explaining in detail what Jupiter in Gemini for all of the rising sign means, I'll leave it right up here for you so you can watch it. But the reason I'm bringing this up again is because at the beginning of June, on June 2nd to be exact, Jupiter trines Pluto. And this is actually a really interesting transit to have right at the beginning of this one year long Jupiter in Gemini event. And what this brings up for me, this trine between Jupiter and Pluto, is this idea that sometimes we are fearful of the new opportunities that come our way. Sometimes we're fearful of achieving success because we are not yet comfortable with the idea that we can be that powerful and that successful. What the Jupiter trine Pluto transits also brings up in my mind is that sometimes we have to let things go in order for new opportunities to come up. Sometimes in order for you to have a better job, you need to let go of the one that Perhaps you don't like very much, but still feels safe and comfortable. And specifically for you, Aries, this transit, this event uh, at the beginning of June could be asking you to let go of some of your goals or some of the ideas that you have about the direction that you want your life to head into in order to allow you to remain positive and curious. It's this idea that sometimes you can be so set on your goals, so set on what you need to achieve and where you're going, that you miss the pleasantries of today, that you miss a piece of information that you hear at a party somewhere that can actually help you get even further with your goals. But because you're not really present there at the party, for example, you're just thinking and strategizing in your head, you're not able to grasp those opportunities. The Sun and Venus will be really active this month. So they're just whizzing by. I mean, the Sun is doing what the Sun always does. It goes through one zodiac sign every month. But Venus is especially fast. Venus is just going to whiz right through Gemini this month. And because they are both moving quite fast, we're going to have them involved in a lot of conversations with different planets all throughout the month. So right at the beginning of the month on June 3rd, we have the first transit with the Sun and Venus. On June 3rd, they sextile the North Node. So the Sun and Venus are in your third house and because they're sextiling the North Node, there might be something from your local surroundings, something happening maybe with your neighbors, with your siblings, in your local community that on this day is helping you step to, towards a more courageous and bold version of yourself. And just a day later, the Sun and Venus become conjunct. So they've been building up to this conjunction for quite a while now. Uh, but it's on June 4th that that conjunction will be exact. And then again, it's happening in your third house. And I really see this event as a day before you had 
a situation that gave you the chance to display courage, that gave you a chance to be bold, independent, stand up for yourself. And the next day, it's almost as if you are getting a reward or a beautiful result, a beautiful consequence of you being bold and courageous. It's almost as if you, you, you say no to your neighbor, you say no to your sibling, you set that boundary. And the next day you find that actually that has brought you closer. That has really strengthened your relationship and your understanding for one another. Just a few days later, on June 6th, we have a new moon in Gemini, again in your third house. So Aries, if you haven't gotten the memo yet, your third house is quite central for you this month. So let's recap. We had the Sun and Venus inching closer together. They became conjunct and now Venus is pulling away. And as they are traveling through uh, your third house, through the sign of Gemini, they're actually getting closer and closer to a square to Saturn. And because they're actually really close to the square in Saturn, it's not exact during this new moon, but they are quite close. You might still feel that Saturnian energy building up during this new moon. So it might feel like a more restrictive new moon than you might be used to. You might feel like there is something new that you want to start in the communication area of your life. Maybe you want to start writing uh, something new. Maybe you want to start communicating with somebody in a different way. Maybe you want to start a new initiative with your community or start to build on your relationship with your neighbors or your siblings. But because we're building up to that Saturn square, it might not get off the ground. It, it might uh, take a little bit of time to get going and you might reach some roadblocks to getting it started. One advice that I always give when we talk about the planet Saturn is to not become discouraged. I know it's a lot easier said than done, but don't become discouraged. Uh, just be open-minded and curious. Be very curious as to how you could still get to your end destination, but maybe go about it in a different way. So that square between Venus and the sun to Saturn happens just two days later on June 8th. So you might feel this restriction during the new moon and all the way up to two days later, and it might reach a sort of crescendo or peak on June 8th. Just a day later, on June 9th, we have Mars entering Taurus. Mars represents our drive, our motivation, our passion, our courage. And Mars entering the sign of Taurus, it's almost as if we're asked to tone that down a bit. We are asked to take a chill pill, <laughs> as we say nowadays, and to maybe see if we can become motivated, courageous, and ambitious with resting. If we can become driven to take more breaks. So going after, having experienced this new moon with the restriction of Saturn, and now Mars also entering the sign of Taurus, you might really feel that your actions are just not going so well they're a bit slow they're taking a while to get going maybe you don't feel as motivated maybe your motivation is to sit at home eat good food and take naps and I want to give you the permission that you are completely allowed to do that not just because Mars is in Taurus you're always allowed to do that if, if that's what you are, are feeling called to do but especially now that Mars is in Taurus, take it easy on yourself and really, really see the importance that rest can bring into our lives as well. Now that Mars has entered Taurus, just a day later, it's a little bit more into the sign of Taurus, an extra degree into the sign of Taurus, and it ends up squaring Pluto. This might be one of the most intense aspects of the month of June. 
Because Mars can be quite fiery and Pluto can deal with a lot of our deep-seated sort of subconscious beliefs and limits that are holding us back. And for you specifically, Aries, Mars is in your second house. So it might be that the actions that you're trying to take to improve your self-confidence, to maybe improve your financial situation, to improve your ability to take care of yourself independently, is in some way revealing the things that are holding you back in terms of your goals. It's it's sort of this idea that you start to notice the limiting beliefs you have about the direction in life that's possible for you. It's this idea that you might be thinking too small, that you have always thought that, well, I can only reach this level because that's everything I've ever seen in my whole life. And, and you're not able to visualize and really realize that the sky is the limit. Another possible manifestation of this transit could be that because you're trying to take actions to improve your self-confidence, your ability to take care of yourself financially, uh, physically, that you start to realize that are that there are certain groups of people or networks that you hang out with that are not really helping you in that regard, that are maybe taking you away from your goals and your ambitions, and that there is some some things, some friendships, some people that maybe need to be let go of. All right, but let's go back to Venus and the sun. (laughs) Now that we've talked about Mars a little bit with Mars entering Taurus, squaring Pluto, let's go back to sun and Venus because they're actually still doing a lot of things. (laughs) So on June 16th, Venus has gone quite far into the sign of Gemini. It's actually almost ready to leave the sign of Gemini, believe it or not, and enter Cancer. But before it does that, it squares Neptune on its way out. All of the love, time, attention, energy you've been directing towards your local community, towards your neighbors, your siblings, uh, towards communicating in a more effective way on this day is going to get triggered in some way by your internal beliefs. It's going to get triggered by any delusions that you might have about what's really going on internally. Um, It's this idea that sometimes we believe we're not self-sabotaging. Sometimes we believe uh, we don't have any addictions and we have somebody close to us, perhaps somebody from uh, our siblings or our neighbors point out to us that actually, I don't know if you knew, but you do this thing and you are the, you're not admitting, you're not conscious that you're doing it quite yet. So I can see this day as a possibility for you to sort of become aware of any places where you have not been truly honest with yourself. So after triggering that uh, conversation with Neptune, Venus is done with Gemini and it enters the sign of Cancer. So from June 17th for the upcoming month, you are going to be spending a lot more time and energy with your family, with um, your home, whether that is your physical home or as well your emotional internal home as well. So don't forget, Venus and the sun were conjunct earlier in the month. So Venus is just a couple of steps ahead of the sun. So whatever Venus just did, the sun is about to do as well. So the sun is also about to square Neptune and the sun is also about to enter the sign of Cancer. So on June 20th, when the sun also squares Neptune, you might see those same stories with the Venus square Neptune come up again. But this time, these stories might trigger your ego a little bit more because we are talking about the sun being involved after all. And then the day after, on the 21st, the sun enters Cancer. So now you really start to see the energy calm down from crazy chaotic Gemini to the more internal Cancerian feeling-based energy. Again, for you, the sign of Cancer is your fourth house, so both the Sun and Venus there. It might be a good idea to... 
take time to be at home, take time to go inwards, do practices that help you go inwards, help you quiet down, connect with your family a little bit more. A day later on the 22nd, this theme of family might be especially prevalent for you. And this is because we have a full moon in Capricorn highlighting for you your fourth and 10th house axis, your family and your social role, your public persona uh, area of your life. So because it's a full moon, we're talking about some sort of revelation, some sort of culmination, being able to finally understand something. And for you specifically, Aries, it might be that there is something happening with your career, with your public persona, the way that people perceive you, that it gives you a sort of understanding about your family home. You know, it could be this, uh, a way that it could manifest is that um, something happens at your, at your career place, at your workplace, that, you know, you get a promotion, you get a boost of confidence that makes you realize that actually these are also the qualities that you want to take and incorporate into your home life as well. So really be curious open, listening to what's happening on this full moon. So we're not done with Venus just yet. Venus has two more important aspects that it's doing up in the sky during the month of June. On June 26th, Venus will square both the North Node and the South Node. So if you remember at the beginning of the month, Venus was sextiling the North Node. So take note what happened then on June 3rd because you might have some of the same conversations coming up around how can you be more bold, courageous, and independent. This time, however, Venus is in your fourth house, whereas earlier in the month, it was in your third house. So this time around, at the end of the month, it might be that there are events or things happening, things being said from your family, uh, things happening with your home that are this time triggering you, pushing you, asking you to be bold, be courageous, uh, do the things that you are fearful to do. On June 28th, we have the final Venus aspect for the month. Venus will sextile Mars on June 28th. So here we see a conversation between your fourth and your second house. And because it is a sextile, I see this day as the things that you have been doing, the attention and energy you've been directing towards your home, towards maintaining beautiful relationships with your family, towards cultivating a welcoming and cozy home, are somehow making it easier for you, are making it easier to love yourself are making it easier for you to step into more self-confidence and insurance that you are able to take care of yourself. You are able to function uh, independently and you are safe, you are secure. And yeah, to just really make it easier to, to love yourself. We are talking about the second house after all. And the second house is all about self-love and self-acceptance. And I know I said earlier that Mars square in Pluto is one of the most intense days of this month, but I gotta say, I saved the best for last. <laughs> or should we say the universe saved the best for last? Because we actually end off the month with a banger. Saturn goes retrograde on June 29th. So Saturn has been in Pisces, in your 12th house, Aries, since March of 2023. It's going to stay there for a whole year, a whole another year. I hope you're not sick of it yet. But this is now the time that it goes retrograde. And it's going to be retrograde in your 12th house for the next couple of months, all the way up until November, actually. So what does this mean for you? It's time to reevaluate if you have been self disciplined and mature with your inner work. If you have been self disciplined and mature with 
figuring out what things you need to let go of, stepping into this new period of your life. If you have been mature and disciplined with cultivating a practice that gets you more in touch with the spiritual reality of our existence. So now that Saturn is retrograde, it could be a good time from the end of June all the way until November to reflect. And the issues might come up back again so that you are in a way required to reflect, even if you don't want to. And reflect, take a look at, are you happy with the way you've handled things? Do you want to improve some things to change how you've done certain things? Because from November onwards, you will get sort of a second chance, um, a second try to do it again. So overall, Aries, I hope you're excited for the month of June. A lot of focus for you in your third and fourth house. A lot of focus on local surroundings, uh, relationships, your family and your home. So I hope you're ready uh, to connect. (laughs) I hope you're ready to focus on those relationships and then towards the end of the month to also take some time to go inwards as well because the relationship to ourselves is uh, honestly one of the most important ones. I hope you enjoyed this forecast and I hope you enjoy the month of June. And in case you missed it, I am doing a giveaway. When we reach a thousand subscribers on this channel, I will give one of you a free reading. So if you're not subscribed, make sure that you do that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.